everyone, and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. And in this video, we find out if I did what I needed to do to make sure that people could land on Tylo. Tylo's looking pretty spiffy at this altitude, to be honest, with the little rocks there and everything. Uh, looking quite good. Again, I have stock visual enhancements, so uh, that might be contributing, or it might not be. I don't know, maybe they spiffied up uh, Tylo in stock. So, the question is whether we send Megan down or Kirsted down. The initial plan was Kirsted uh, to do the science, but maybe be safer to do Megan because we don't really have comms properly, um, and Megan's the pilot. But we'll, we'll see. Let me uh, send Kirsted into the lander first. Now, we also have to keep in mind where we need to land. But first we'll sort out who's going to land and then we'll figure it out. So Kirstead is in the lander cam and we'll see how controllable it is with just Kirstead. I don't see any problems. Okay. So I think Kirstead can do it. Why do we... Wait a second. Where did our error engines go? Uh, guys... We were supposed to have there's a decoupler here because there was supposed to be engines on that top part. Where did they go? They were supposed to be spark engines. Those spark engines. Uh-oh. We've got a problem. Those spark engines. Uh, did I? <clears throat> I was supposed to copy them from here and put them on there. But I think I took them off of here and put them on there. Well, I did not foresee that one. Oh, God. Um, well, shucks. <laughs> uh, so, let's say we do fuel crossfeed here. How much Delta V do we have? That doesn't actually show. So, I mean, I was gonna feed the fuel directly into the cheetah and see whether that would be enough. That probably won't be, but... The Cheetah's got a pretty high ISP, so there was a potential there, but it's not telling me anything. Well, I mean, I've, I've set myself for this. I want to land on Tylo. We'll at least see how much Delta V it takes to land on Tylo, and then we'll have to rescue Kirstead, <laughs> I guess. Let's see where the Tylo Lightstone is first. Minor craters, Grissom Crater or Galilello? Galilello Crater? Shouldn't they? I mean, they spell everything else right. Uh, Galileo. Oh, they, they spell it like that. Like, okay, fine. All right. Galileo Crater. I can't believe I didn't have the engines. I'm actually going to pull up a map of Tylo to see where the heck these things are. There are four named craters. I mean, those would be the easiest to spot. That one, that one. This is apparently not a crater, so that one, that one. That looks like it ought to be a crater. Where are we over right now? Probably something generic. Uh, Lowlands. Now, is this a crater? Nope, just more Lowlands. That ought to be a crater, though. Oh, maybe it's this and that are craters. Let's see. But are they the right craters? Still lowlands. Let me try again. Nope, apparently these are not craters. Could have fooled me. I think this crater and this crater are special craters, but I don't know which ones they are. We'll wait until our, they go under our orbit. I don't know if they do actually. They might be just too far south. There's basically a one out of two chance that either one is a crater we need. Well, as much as I don't want to, 
I think we need to try and... Oh, we can't do maneuver nodes, right? Well, it's barely touching it. Let's see. Uh, okay, maybe we're just in the bad part of the crater. Oh, minor craters. Keep. Maybe that's just that patch, though. Pretty sure this is otherwise a major crater. Well, we must have moved on by now. Yeah. Okay, so we don't know which crater that is. This bit is probably the minor craters bit. So we could get in there. Actually, I think I'll wait until the crater comes around on this side again. So we'll wait a while. I think we should just try for this crater and see what happens. Uh, that one looks nicer though. I don't want to correct inclination anymore. So let's just try landing. I don't know if we strand Kerstead, we strand Kerstead. It's Kerstead's fault for not being able to take things from other vessels. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's three minutes there. This stage is reading 61 seconds. But how much of the crater is this? Is this the right crater? Is this a right crater? So many questions. Okay, well, we're going to try it. Seems low enough to me, but it could be lowlands. We're losing Delta V a lot faster than I thought we would. Okay, looks like symmetry works for fuel priority. Oh, we've gone too far. Oh, we have no idea how much Delta V we have. Well, we could check whether we're on the right biome. EV report. Tycho Crater. No, that's not the right biome. Um, can we abort to orbit? <laughs> I don't even know. I doubt it. I think it's safe as just to land. I don't think this lander actually had enough to land and get back to orbit again, to be honest. But stranding a Kerbal in a crater that we didn't even need to visit is annoying. Landing on Tylo is no joke. I want like 4,000 meters per second for this, not 2,000 something. We're down to fumes here. Uh, ow! We literally ran out. Ah, plot. It's fine, this wasn't going back into orbit anyway. Um, okay. Did we happen to actually kill our goo container? Is that what happened? No, our goo container's there. Um, take the gravioli data. Take the thermometer data. And take whatever data's in there. Board. Crew report, keep, and let's get the seismic data, make it really worthwhile to rescue Kerstead here. Okay, Kerstead is comfy in the pod. I don't see any interesting rocks around. Oh, we might as well let Kerstead check. Uh-oh. Well, the jetpack doesn't work on Tylo very well. Let me just double check that. We can jump, but yeah, the jetpack doesn't really work. So any attempt to check on rocks takes a while. Maybe we should have like uh, an ISRU lander on Tylo. 
but it'll really depend on whether there's resources in the location that we want to land at. We should have sent a resource scanner. There's a shiny rock over there, but that's obviously way too big to be something that Kirsten can pick up. That's one of those that the the rover would have to scan. But we might want to look at it anyway. There's a small rock over there, I think. I was going for the shiny rock, but I've lost sight of the shiny rock now. Could this be a Duna Lightstone? Not Duna Lightstone. Tyler Lightstone. Hmm. Well, we bump into it. Pick up Tyler Lightstone! So, even though it's not the right biome, we managed to get one. Well, now we really have to rescue Kirstead. Keep. Kirstead has the Lightstone. I wanted to see the fancy big stone, though. Well, now it looks a little bit more distinct. Well, it's something. I don't know what to call it, though. But it's definitely important, so... This is where Kirstead is going to plant the flag. Kirstead... It already fell down. The flag already fell down. At special rock on Tylo. For science. Indeed, uh, planting the flag here is definitely reflective of the science first attitude we respect from our Kerbal scientists. Don't knock the flag around. That'll make it much less useful. Okay, so let's get back to the pod. Just um, so we have a better reference for where Kirstead is. I mean, we could come all the way here, but the, there's science in the pod anyway. Well, this has been a super long EVA for Kirstead, over half an hour now. Ladder on the pod isn't exactly in the correct location for Kirstead to scramble onto it. We'll see if the climb function actually works for once. Come on, clamber, 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 clamber. All right. Okay, Kirstead's pretty good at these sorts of things. Okay, Tylo Lightstone Analysis has been added. All right, so now we just have to rescue Kirstead. Fortunately, at this point, we're not too far away from another jewel launch window. We just need Kerbin to be over here-ish, so... This is a priority. We need to rescue our Kerbals. I've, of course, left the return vessel in orbit of Jewel. We can still use it as the return vessel, unless I've done something wrong with it as well. Which would be annoying. Okay, well, we're pulling out all the stops to rescue our Kerbal and get that science, but... Uh, well, that does leave things a little bit complicated. Now, I could have made it more complicated by going with the ISRU option, but I've decided that we'll, uh, we'll send our... Uh, resource scanner but we won't actually do the ISRU for this time we'll try and get this this segment into a polar orbit around Tylo to scan but well anyway let's go with the lander here I've made it more robust we have two terriers instead of two sparks here you can see and uh, really the lander is this portion so let's take that first and if we take a vacuum I as uh, Delta V, we've got 3,511. This is responsible for the final bit of touchdown and then getting back to orbit. And you can see we've got uh, Commutron 88-88, so that will allow it to communicate directly with Kerbin, so we'll have to be in line with Kerbin. To counterbalance that, I put both solar panels on this side along with the two batteries and extra batteries up there, and that adds up to the same mass as that antenna. And we still have the little Octo-2 up there and a docking port because we eventually do want to rendezvous with the return ship and of course the cabin will be empty we will not have fill cell in there let's get fill cell out okay so that actually gave us a little bit more delta v because we don't have fill cells pack or anything and then we have the descent stage now descent stage is not going to do touchdown obviously there's no landing legs so this is the method we were doing method one before where descent stage actually touches down and then the ascent stage just goes up again so that's the apollo way uh, this method is more 
the sort of the Soviet lunar lander way, which is uh, this stage is going to partly be responsible for getting us into orbit around Tylo and then starting descent off all the way down to the last bit of descent when this lander finally does the last bit. That'll allow it to be stouter, as you can see. I even put little uh, cubic octags there to make it as stout, uh, uh, widen the wheel, uh, not the wheel base, but the strut base to make sure we don't topple over this time, hopefully. And um, actually, one other thing we can do is uh, fuel priority for that top tank can be higher. So we'll drain that first and drain these second. So our center of mass is as low as possible. Okay, so that will be hopefully something that will help. Uh, we still have the ladder, and that will still extend long enough. And yeah, so I've, I've pulled out all the stops, so we got the wolfhound here. I tried other things on this stage, and that included, in fact, uh, the new model of the Poodle, which I was interested in. The Poodle has this uh, single bell model, which looks very nice, but I ended up having to put two cheetah alongside in order to get the thrust that I wanted, so I decided the Wolfhound would be better. Um, basically, I could have had, I mean, one Poodle and one cheetah is equal to one Wolfhound in thrust. Uh, the Wolfhound is a little bit heavier than that, but it has a lot more efficiency. So it ended up being a good deal to just put a wolfhound on. Anyway, uh, so we've got antenna, uh, not antenna, a resource scanner here. Uh, we've got another Commutron 88-88 uh, here so that this can communicate back, but it's not a relay. And we've got two soul panels on this side because we're counterbalancing the mass of the survey scanner. I'm very particular about this. And I tried everything and we still ended up using the wolfhounds on this stage. And uh, yeah, I had a, ver a variety of other options and attempted to use other things, but this seemed like the best deal. Uh, it's possible that sufficient numbers of cheetahs could have worked, but uh, it's probably cheaper, but we're going with this, even though the bells are sort of clipping the side there hopefully there's not going to be any problem and then we have a huge stage with three main sails and then six of the twin bores plus extra tanks on the side so that's the arrangement i tried using the clydesdales instead of the twin bores but actually uh, that was more expensive so we are going with this and of course we're going to have the Twin bores and the mainsails go first. These go there. And therefore we have a sea level thrust weight ratio of 1.33. The next day, well, the mainsails after those go off have 0.88. But I have a fuel line here just in case we want to keep the twin bores running for a little bit longer if I decide that that's necessary. So. These have higher fuel priority, of course, than the core tanks. Um, but that should be unidirectional. Anyway, we'll have to double check on that. But that's the idea. It's very cumbersome. At least we still have the, re the return vessel in orbit of the moon. So that is good. But will this work? I don't know. At least we're not risking a Kerbal on it. So here we go. Uh oh. Oh no. Okay. Okay. I did auto strut. Oh no, I didn't. I guess I auto strut the Clydesdales, but not the twin bores. Okay, back in before everything blows up. It's pretty expensive after all. Okay, auto strutting the twin bores. Okay, well, here we go. Throttle up. SCS is on. And. Launch. Well, seems vigorous to me. Okay, we really need to check how the fuel is draining here. Alright, let's pin that. It's actually using that tank already. Well, that it should actually, that's fine. Because the mainsails aren't drawing from the booster tanks. 
I think we'll be all right. Okay, boosters off. Plenty of Delta V here. Always overdoing it. Okay, fairing set. Uh, let's cut it there and coast for a bit. Okay, that's orbit and we'll use that 545, why not? This is a heck of a huge wet workshop if we decide to use it. It's going to be stuck in high carbon orbit after this. Wow, three different encounters with Jewel. That's special. <laughs> That's special, all right. Okay, uh, we really only need one of those. And we'll probably want to make course adjustment for that bit. All right. We'll take this first though. But we have comms at the proper location. That's the question. Well, I don't know. There's, there's not a whole lot going on in this part of our, our orbit here. We'll probably still have com with commsat 4. I hope. We're currently directly in line with that location, whatever it is. It is. Okay, well, I'm going to turn on RCS for now, even though we'll deplete some from up there, I think. Well, hopefully the tanks up there are lower priority. I guess so. Looks fine. Okay, we're a little bit late. Let me get a modicum of thrust in to turn. This is just bonus Delta V anyway. Nice bloom up here, though. Okay, let me just quickly reassess the comms. I think we're okay. We're between two satellites. So, next. Alright, well, the clipping did not hurt our four wolfhounds here. Okay, let's check where we're at here. Okay, there's our encounter. And that's as close as we're going to get without the mid-course adjustment. Uh, that was after a year. I want that orbit. Now again, your timing may vary when it says 102 days for me. That's because I'm using 24-hour days here. Mainly because I copied my settings file from the real solar system install, so I still have 24-hour days. Could change that, but I'm already resigned to it. It's fine. Okay, that's counterclockwise. Very important. And we are not in sync with Tylo, so we cannot get Tylo's help to get into orbit, apparently. Other normal option is Lathe. Uh, there. There's a pass by lathe that'll get us into orbit around Joule. And it's a flat orbit, also important. And a safe periapsis over Joule. So we will take that correction. And on we go to the mid-course adjustment. Let's make sure our cores hibernate in warp. We've got one up there. We also have one on this stage here. Just in case I wanted to use it since I was disappointed in not having control over the stage we left in orbit of Tylo before. Uh, it just said we had lost communication. I didn't know why. So I pulled it out of time warp. Now it's saying we do have communication. Right before the node. So I definitely want communication. Steady now, steady. Looking, okay, off of that. Looking for that lathe encounter, so can't be too imprecise about this. 
Okay, 0 0.1 meters per second. Uh, I guess we'll need some RCS to figure that out. All right. There we go. Uh, too much, too much, too much, too much. Okay. Well, as long as you're not going to overuse the RCS. Okay. That's close to lathe, low enough joule periapsis. Joule, we're safe until 200 kilometers, which is amazing, but, uh, but that's a lot of inclination. We can fix that when we get there, though. So, onward. Let's make sure that our orientation is good for power. Okay, we are in joule SOI. We still have comms. And if we rotate a bit, we should get better power here. Uh, consuming a lot when we're not in time warp. But in time warp, we're okay. Wonder uh, SAS off. Oh, okay, it's recharging when we have SAS off, though. So, all right. Now, let's refine that approach to lathe. And our goal is just to make sure everything stays flat. As you can see, making this flat also pulls our orbit in closer to Joule, which would be dangerous. So that's safe. And it looks flat. All right, those are the things we want. I think we will just use RCS here to make it happen. Okay, so lathe periapsis, jewel periapsis, all right. Everything seems to be in order. Coming straight at it, no, okay, glancing blow. Looks like a watercolor somehow. Okay, onward. We are now captured around Jewel. And we have to finagle a Tylo encounter. Do we have the Delta V? I think we have plenty of Delta V. Uh, what we want is a polar orbit to do the scanning, though. So we're really forcing a polar orbit here. We're taking extra Delta V for that. There is a minimum height for the scanner, though. So we actually can't be this close. But we'll just capture close and then lift up, I think. Okay, so periapsis. Capture. How much does it cost? And we do want eventually a tight capture, but for now we can keep it loose. That's just 600. We'll have it. And then if we want to then get into a lower orbit, uh, it's 1,200. So we'll have the amount that we need. Have to be careful that we actually have comms when we do things, though. Okay, well, I've used physical time warp to do the turn. Now, are we going to have comms when I start the engines? Yes. Uh, our periapsis is on the side that has a line back to Kerbin, so no problems there. Okay, is that good enough? That doesn't seem like the same result. <laughs> Let's see. A little bit higher than I was expecting, but it's okay. Um, probably it's a thousand five hundred kilometers. Let's just assume that and go to that height. Okay, a little bit of... Uh, it should be getting power, it's fine. There's a chance Jewel could be blocking our signal back. I don't think so, though. Tylo, Tylo's over here, that's over there. It should be a line back like that, so hopefully everything's okay. I'm gonna spend a lot of time in Jewel Shadow, though. Okay. 
We don't have to rendezvous with anything, we just have to land at the site. And since we're in polar orbit, we will eventually be able to do that. Let's see, our inclination is 94 degrees, which should be good enough. Okay, line of communication is still good. And, well, a little bit more, and go. Okay, so we have a signal strength of 49%. We've got two antennae. So there's a little bit of a issue here, I just realized. I didn't really mean for the survey scanner to be deployed until after this got decoupled off. You see, otherwise it's going to be hitting it. However, there's two problems with that. First of all, I would like to use this stage to get into a lower orbit with everything and take advantage of its fuel. And so if we decouple that off, we can't do that very well. And also, with the signal strength of 49%, I don't know what percentage it'll be with just one antenna. It'll be less. I think it'll be all right, but I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, one thing we'll... So I think we'll just accept the clipping as unsightly as it is. And let's just check the... Oh, it can already do it. I guess the periapsis was all right. Okay, well, we got the science and we got the scan done. Let's just retract that so it doesn't look horrible. Okay. But yeah, that was not supposed to be done there. It was supposed to be done after the decoupling, but this saves us a bit. And we'll get into a low orbit. So given our orbital situation, we'll want to meet up with our target over on this side, I guess. It might be good to tilt our orbit somewhat to make sure that our location on that side will actually maintain communication with Kerbin without any horizon issue. So that's what I'm doing there. Tilting it like that, and we'll also bring it down a bit. I think that'll be fine. Let's just go over to periapsis and see how things are. So, we're not really blocked at all right now, which is good. And our target is there, so it's going to take a few orbits before we can meet up with it. Hopefully things don't change too much before then. But I'm going to bring the orbit down now. Okay, we have expended that stage. It's in orbit. It's in a fairly tight orbit. And I think I'll save the actual rescue for next time. I think there's been enough chaos in this video. So, we've, uh, well, we've got it here. And we'll see how we manage to rescue our Kerbal and get the science and get everybody back to where they belong. So with that being the goal, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.